What's up, Chain React? <laughs> I am super excited to be here with you all today and be back on the stage. It feels really awesome. I love the React Native community. It's kind of where I got my, uh, my start speaking, so it has a really special place in my heart. Uh, but I am super excited to share with you all all the really cool things that we've been working on at Apollo, especially uh, surrounding state management. So here we go. Uh, my name is Peggy Razis, and uh, I'm on the Apollo team. I have some exciting personal news to share. Uh, as of this week, I'm officially an engineering manager, uh, which is really exciting. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, previously, before that, I was an engineer on the open source team, uh, uh, building mostly client-side tooling, um, and uh, also doing a fair bit of developer advocacy work, uh, teaching workshops and um, writing blog posts, things like that. Uh, so as we get started today, I just, uh, I know many of us in the room are probably product engineers, uh, working primarily on React Native apps, so I want you to just sit and think about uh, the last React Native feature that you built. So maybe it was a date picker or a form or perhaps uh, maybe a list of cards, uh, but just envision the process of building that feature. So how much time did you actually spend building the UI for that feature? How much time did you spend on animations, accessibility, and perfecting the user experience? Or did you spend most of your time not actually building UI, but managing data instead? Since React is unopinionated about your data layer, you often have to make a lot of decisions about how to get the, the data into your date picker, or infinite list, or form. And unfortunately, that process of fetching and managing data takes a lot of time. And I'd venture to say it probably takes uh, even more time than actually building the UI itself. And that's because managing data in modern React apps is extremely complex. I mean, before you even f make your first network request, you have a lot of choices on which packages to install. You have to think about state management concerns like reducers and, and middleware and async action creators if you're using Redux. And you also have to keep uh, performance in mind once you actually get that data and perhaps roll your own caching solution uh, or normalization, uh, use selectors as well. And then you have to worry about how you're going to build necessary features for your application like optimistic mutations and pagination and offline support. And it's just a lot of unnecessary stress. And as product developers, the apps that we build are increasingly data driven. I mean, we're building for mobile, we're building for wearables, VR, IoT, all using these same React Native primitives. And our clients are also requesting data from a variety of different microservices. And we have to meet our users where they are, so we constantly have to keep building for these new platforms. And over time, this process, it starts to get a little bit messy. And to make matters worse, we're duplicating all of this data management code for fetching data and sorting it and aggregating it across every new client that you build. And not only does this exponentially increase your maintenance burden, it also leads to uh, a lot of bugs and duplication. Luckily, GraphQL can actually uh, help us eliminate some of this duplicated logic by layering a GraphQL server like Apollo server over our existing microservices. We can now reuse all of that sorting and filtering logic that used to live in our Redux action creators. Uh, and we can use this across all of the platforms that we support. GraphQL, it actually gives us a schema. So now we know exactly uh, what data all our microservices have, and our clients can request exactly what they need. And this actually, it saves us round trips over the network, uh, as well as smaller payload sizes, which is extremely important if you're building a React Native app. So if Apollo server can help us eliminate complexity from the back end, then Apollo client is what helps us eliminate all this complexity on the front end. So instead of writing complex code for fetching and transforming the data uh, into the shape that you need, you just create a GraphQL query, and then you bind it to your UI with Apollo's query component. And this query component takes care of a lot for you. It makes the request, uh, it gets the data, it caches the data, it tracks loading and error state for you, and as well as uh, it reactively updates your UI. 
So you don't need to worry about normalization or selectors or install a bunch of different packages in order to make this work. Uh, you just get all this for free out of the box. And it turns out that Apollo Client is actually a really great fit for React Native. So Apollo Client itself is Vue layer agnostic. Uh, we have integrations for React, we have integrations for Vue, Angular. It's extremely unopinionated. So you can use it out of the box with no additional configuration in a React Native app. And whether your React Native app is completely greenfield, completely written in JavaScript where you would use uh, Apollo Client, we also have native clients as well for brownfield apps. So you're free to use either the JavaScript client or Apollo iOS and Apollo Android as well. Um, and there's pretty high feature parity between the two. Uh, you know, you can do queries, mutations, subscriptions um, in a, a really nice and easy to use API. And one of the differentiating features of Apollo Client um, compared to other GraphQL clients is that it intelligently normalizes and caches your data for you. So if you're at using any other state management solution today like Redux, you usually have to use something like Normalizer to do this manually and manage caching yourself. And this gets really messy. With Apollo Client, you don't have to write or maintain that code yourself. The caching system is actually intelligent enough to update your query results reactively, even if one query result updates the result of another query. For example, if you have maybe uh, you know, a list of articles and then you have a detail page where you update the title of an article on that detail page. Apollo's cache is smart enough to actually update the query fetching that list of articles with a new updated title. Uh, so that's really the, the normalization and intelligent caching at work that you get out of the box with Apollo Client. So up until now, we've mostly been talking about uh, remote data from a GraphQL server. However, most apps are probably made up of at least some local data. Maybe you have uh, some data with uh, the network status of your device or maybe information about the current user or, or local state from a form. Uh, and it turns out that we can actually manage our local data the same way we manage our remote data. And that's inside the Apollo cache thanks to an extension called Apollo Link State. And the way this works is we have a React component which sends a query to Apollo Client. And using Apollo's extensible network stack called Apollo Link, we can actually intercept that request. And instead of sending it to our GraphQL server, we can send it then to our client cache. And we have Apollo Links for just about everything. Um, you can use it with a Firebase store, a REST endpoint, or any other data source that you choose. It's extremely extensible. Um, but today we're gonna mostly talk about Apollo Link state and managing local data inside the Apollo cache. And with this architecture now, GraphQL actually becomes a unified interface to all of our application's data. And the Apollo cache becomes the single source of truth for all of the data within our application. And this is really great because we no longer have to worry about syncing our Apollo cache with an external uh, store like Redux. And we actually don't even have to load Redux into our app at all. Uh, so, you know, this sounds a little bit experimental, but the ideas have actually really resonated with developers worldwide. So what started off as like a weekend hack uh, between me and my coworkers, it actually grew exponentially over the past six months, with now almost half of all React Apollo users using Apollo Link State for their local state management. Uh, I mean, Hilton's using it in production, the New York Times, we're using it in Apollo Engine. A lot of big companies are now starting to bet on Apollo Link State and Apollo Client as their overall state management solution for their React apps. Uh, and even Airbnb engineers are using it too. I was really excited uh, to find out, I actually gave a version of this talk at Airbnb on Tuesday, and I found out that they are also moving to Apollo Link State for their local state management. Uh, this is an actual code sample from a, a new unreleased scheduling app that they have. Um, and it's using Apollo Link State in order to manage their form data. So um, if you've worked with GraphQL on the server before, you'll notice that that API uh, in order to perform a state update is actually uh, exactly similar to the resolver API that you would use on the server. So this is really awesome because we only have to learn one model for reading and writing data, regardless of where it's stored. The only difference here is that the cache is actually added to the resolver's context. So then you can read and write directly to the Apollo cache using the cache.writeData method. 
Uh, so now that we have that state update, how do we actually query this data from another component in our uh, React tree? So all you need to do is just write a GraphQL query the same way that you would for server data. And all you have to do is just add this client directive up there uh, to tell Apollo client to direct that query to the Apollo cache instead of a remote server. So what's cool is that this is actually extremely flexible. You can uh, request local and remote data in one query. You can actually calculate local data from remote data. And you can even add client-only fields to server data. Um, and ultimately, I think uh, we think that leveraging GraphQL is this unified interface to all of our data. And Apollo Client as the single source of truth will dramatically reduce all of the complexity associated with state management in modern React apps today. So you can just focus on building amazing user experiences. So all of this is pretty awesome. I think we've already been able to prove uh, the value of managing local state with GraphQL. But what's next? So I'm really excited to share our vision of what's to come with the future of React state management. And most of what I'm about to show you has never uh, been seen before, and it's still in the early phases. So I'm really excited to hear what you all think uh, and get your feedback. So we kind of want to focus on three areas here um, when we're talking about the future of what's next with state management and GraphQL, and one of which is uh, features. So let's discuss some of the features we have planned and some of the architecture changes coming down the pipeline. So here's the current architecture for Apollo Link State. So it's actually quite unique because it operates completely out of the context of Apollo Client since it actually talks to the cache directly. And this was a great start to uh, you know, prototype something rapidly, but over the past six months through our conversations um, with actual users, we've learned that it's made certain features like writing initial state to the cache perhaps after a store reset, or even integration with things like server-side rendering uh, and Apollo cache persist, it's made these things a little bit difficult. So, um, so what's next? How are we going to take that feedback that we've gotten over the past six months and, and uh, use it to improve uh, local state management? So we want to make it easier for Apollo Link State to actually hook into Apollo Client life cycles. So we're planning on integrating it into Apollo Client core in the very near future. So this might be Apollo Client 3.0, it might be a minor version bump, we haven't quite figured out all the details yet, but what we are sure about is that uh, it will make integrations with server-side rendering, and then also packages like Apollo Cache Persist way easier than it was before. So I wanna talk about cache persistence briefly because I think it's something that's extremely relevant to React Native developers. Um, so we have this package, it's called Apollo Cache Persist. And what's really awesome about it is that you can uh, use any storage provider that you decide. Uh, and you can actually set a trigger. So uh, upon Apollo Cache write, or uh, maybe when the app goes into the background, uh, Apollo Cache Persist will automatically extract all of the contents from your Apollo client cache and then dump it into uh, either local storage or async storage. So that way, um, you know, when the user uh, loads the app, even if they're online, um, they'll have all the data ready for them. Um, and what's really great is uh, Apollo Cache Persist is extremely flexible. It's swappable with any storage provider. So if you need to use uh, the file system, you can use that as well. Um, and it's also very configurable. So um, on Android, obviously, you have that uh, async storage limit, so you can set a max size um, for it to stop persisting when your cache exceeds a certain threshold. So this is just an example of one of the integrations that's going to become a lot easier once we, um, we merge Apollo Link State into Apollo Client Core. And I'm super excited to see uh, kind of the future of this. So now that we talked a little bit about some of the new features, um, let's talk about the developer experience. So we're really looking to improve the developer experience even further by integrating some of our existing server-side tooling with Apollo Engine into your existing workflow. So while you can already define a client-side schema uh, in Apollo Link State today, we're planning on adding even more features to make uh, your local GraphQL schemas even more useful. So one of the things that we want to do is introduce opt-in schema validation that will give you helpful errors during development time if the GraphQL data that you're requesting isn't what your schema expects. And if you're unfamiliar with GraphQL schemas, this is kind of just a blueprint um, for all of the data in your application and it's strongly typed as well. 
And uh, you know, performing this schema validation on the server, uh, you know, it requires a lot of code. The modules for GraphQL JS are pretty heavy. So uh, when we're doing the schema validation on the client, we actually plan on decoupling any validation from uh, the execution of your resolvers, and we're gonna strip all that logic out in production so you don't inflate your bundle size unnecessarily. So you'll also be able to upload your client schemas to Apollo Engine. And Apollo Engine is our cloud service that gives you the tools that you need to confidently run GraphQL in production. So you'll actually be able to upload your schema and see exactly which local fields are requested the most and how long it took the resolvers to run. So this will allow you to safely refactor your app since you'll know exactly which local data is requested the most. And this is something you really can't get today with any existing state management solution. We want to integrate this more tightly into your existing workflow. Um, so we actually have an integration with GitHub Checks, so it just becomes a natural part of your CI process. You'll be able to validate your schema against any queer active queries that have been run against your app in the past 24 hours, as well as with some custom validation rules as well. And this will uh, dramatically prevent the amount of breaking changes. I mean, uh, you know, in a Redux app today, if you add or remove one of your actions, you don't know whether it's actually going to break your app. Um, thanks to the strongly typed nature of GraphQL, we have a little bit more um, uh, certainty here that the changes that we're making are not going to break our UI. So that's just an example of one of the things that we're doing to working to improve the developer experience. Um, but what about tooling? Because I think uh, the strongly typed nature of GraphQL opens the door for some really, really exciting new tooling um, that you can't, just, you can't get with any current state management solution today. Um, so one of, this thing, it, one of these things is DevTools. Um, we're currently uh, in the early stages of finding contributors to port Apollo DevTools to the React Native debugger. So React Native developers can take advantage of this as well. But one of the really cool features is that you'll actually be able to stitch your local schema with your remote schema. And this has the advantage of uh, allowing you to view all local and remote queries and mutations from one place within um, your developer tools. So you're not constantly context switching between, um, you know, am I making a local mutation, a remote mutation? It's all right there, easily explorable, um, and available for you to test. So um, you never have to kind of uh, leave the confines of your debugger. Um, but another really cool thing uh, that the strongly typed nature of GraphQL enables is code generation. So um, we have a tool, it's called Apollo CodeGen. It'll actually take your schema and analyze your queries and then automatically generate TypeScript and flow definitions um, for you that you can then use in your query components to check that the data is, in fact, the types that you expect. Um, and this is also what Apollo iOS uses to auto-generate models for your Swift types as well. So up until this point, um, Apollo CodeGen, it didn't work with client-side schemas. But um, recently, uh, we got it working, and it uh, hasn't been announced yet. I'm super excited to show you all because I think this is really the future here. So um, you'll, you'll run the Apollo CLI, and the Apollo CLI will take your schema, analyze your queries, and then automatically generate um, TypeScript definitions. So here's an example of what that TypeScript definition will look like. And it actually has watch mode as well. So um, in your app to the left, if you add or remove a field, um, those type definitions will automatically update for you. So this is really cool. Um, you know, using our GraphQL schema as a blueprint for our data, we then have some really cool um, you know, type generation and uh, type safety that we can get um, just from running the Apollo CLI. So this is finally available for all of you to try today. Um, just in, uh, install the Apollo CLI. I also want to call out uh, the work of uh, one of our interns, Shadaj. I, I literally gave him this challenge last week. I was like, hey, wouldn't it be crazy if we had CodeGen for client-side schemas? And he literally had it working in a day. Um, so it's just really impressive uh, some of the work that our interns have been able to achieve. Um, so yeah, definitely try it out, give us feedback. We're really excited about uh, the direction this is going. Um, but we're not done yet. So uh, one of the other things that is going to be released very soon in the near future is actually a VS Code extension that will allow you to run queries from within your editor. 
And we plan on integrating this VS Code extension with Apollo Engine. So uh, right from within your uh, editor, you'll be able to register your schema, validate it, uh, perform code generation, all in one tool. And this is really great. This is kind of um, why GraphQL is so beneficial for state management, is because it just opens the door for more continuity between um, client-side tooling and uh, tooling for your remote data as well. So we are super excited about the direction here. So thanks to Thanks uh, for better integrations to help with feature, features like cache persistence, combined with an excellent development experience that allows you to safely refactor without breaking your UI. On top of uh, advanced tooling that takes advantage of the type safety of GraphQL, we're confident that the next generation of Apollo Link State will be something that all React Native engineers can get really excited about. So we think that leveraging GraphQL as a unified interface to all of our data an Apollo client as the single source of truth for all the data in our application, uh, it will dramatically reduce all the complexity associated with state management in modern React apps today. So you can just focus on building amazing user experiences. Uh, but above all, we're really here to, to help and guide you through this process. So please reach out if there's any way we can help or, or any ideas that you might have. So if this sounds really exciting to you, uh, be sure to join us at GraphQL Summit it's our two-day conference dedicated to all things GraphQL, and it's coming up in November. Uh, and our CFP is officially open, so I'll be speaking. Um, we have a couple uh, other speakers from Airbnb and uh, SurveyMonkey uh, joining us as well, but um, I wanna hear from all of you. So if you're using GraphQL in your React Native apps, please, please, please um, send in your proposal. Um, you know, we'd love to hear from you. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or come find me later today. Thank you all so much.